Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our second um, live stream this month. Uh, this time uh, we've got three of us on screen for the first time ever. So I'm joined to my left by Rafa and to my right by Jaime. Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hi our... Everyone. Oh, damn it. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah, hey, fine. Okay, sorry about that. Same mistake as last, as last time, by the way. So that makes it more natural. So yeah. welcome, everyone. Um, this live stream is wrapping up the Rayclone 6 release, which took place two weeks ago. So it's been quite successful. We have to say that. We are quite satisfied with the, with the welcome among users. Um, so you can find everything about this release on our website and the news post. And uh, we are very happy and very glad to have over um, my fellowship Spanish um, a colleague, uh, Rafa, from RZ Graphics. Uh, happy to be here. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I think it's the first time, actually, that the second time, first time for Raycon that we rely on a third party to, to build the scene. Um, for the release, which is which is a big help, we have to say that because it's it's very time consuming. We are software developers. We are not um, scene creators, though we do it uh, nicely and and we try to do it as as good as possible. But it's it's very time consuming. So so Rafa's help on this side was huge, 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 and we are very very th very thankful for that. So um, we're gonna jump to him, um, Rafa. It's all on you. Um, I'll be taking care of the Q and A. Of course, Paul will be will be moderating, and and all the tech conversation is going to be among the two of them. So, Perfect. I'll be taking care of the of the chat. Again, any questions? Please feel free to drop any comments. Um, and yeah. welcome everyone. So, so yeah, any especially any questions for Rafa because we have him here this one time uh, for now. Yep. Uh, who knows in the future? Um, so, any questions? We'll feed them back to him. I'll be asking Rafa any questions if that might occur to me as well. Um, you've got some fans already uh, in the chat, Rafa. People saying hello to you. Uh, so, hi guys. Nice to be welcomed. <laughs> By the way, just before Rafa starts, uh, this is the first time we have a third party in a Q and A in a live stream, and our idea is to to you know uh, bring more more invites in the future. Because I'm, uh, I know you guys love to have Paul on screen and myself, uh, but um, we think that bringing third party it's it's gonna be um, it's gonna be it's gonna make this this Q and A more interesting. So so that's the plan. So Rafa, all yours. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, shall I uh, start uh, sharing? Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's try this. It's working properly. Yeah, everybody? All good? Yeah, okay. working. Well, first of all, thank you very much. I I really appreciate the opportunity of uh, being here, sharing the space uh, with you. It was uh, it was great to have the opportunity to to have a collaboration, to, to do a collaboration with you, with uh, such a great team. So again, I, I know that I, I uh, told you several times that it was, it was a nice opportunity for me. So thank you very much. And uh, well, let's start a little bit with uh, making off. I would like to thank also for the support of uh, Pedro Pitarche Architects, who is uh, always uh, supporting uh, this project. So I want to thank him uh, the, the the support uh, for allow us to to work in the uh, his uh, great design for for this scene. I will explain a little bit better later uh, about our collaboration. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce a little bit of my background, just to explain why this uh, collaboration is happening. Also, I I am uh, I have an architect architectural uh, background, and uh, I am always happy to learn. I am I always I'm always uh, glad to learn uh, new stuff. I like the research. I like the teaching. Now I'm I'm involved with the uh, teaching collaborations, with the uh, schooling, with uh, Eduardo Rodriguez and uh, Adam Martin in schooling in, in Madrid. That's something that I always liked. I have uh, around seven years experience on it. And this because um, I think it's, it's, it's really important, uh, this part of the research. I always like to revisit uh, concepts 
right to 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 discover how other people think about it how can i explain in a different way this this kind of concepts and it always enrich my my knowledge so uh, uh, that's why i always like to keep the research and uh, and uh, the, the collaborations with uh, other parties and other companies and uh, that's why always uh, uh, also I, I, uh, one of the reasons I, why I created are the graphics, the, the, my studio. I started uh, a few time ago and uh, I'm uh, really happy and I'm trying to mix always this philosophy uh, with uh, my product and uh, to offer uh, solutions and uh, creativity in, in this way uh, to, to our clients. Um, so uh, I would like to be focused today in uh, why rail clone is important for me because in the end it's a, a tool that allows me to to within my workflow allows me to to um, to have effectivity to to be efficient and to to, to bring solutions uh, really fast to my clients and uh, this is a, an, a scheme that. Uh, a structure more or less for the workflow that uh, everybody that works in the field could have similar similar workflow. So uh, it could be really familiar for you. I would like to be focused on the production, which is the phase that I think it could be more creative in, in a, with Rayclon and uh, with 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 this kind of uh, uh, languages for modeling and uh, and uh, and these kind of activities. Um, also, um, okay, is, uh, okay, but, uh, well, but uh, let's, <clears throat> that's why, uh, I would like to be focused on the process I said, and, uh, in this sense, uh, this is the kind of, uh, process that we always find in the production, right? So we have always to think about the project. I like to think in every project that the images are not uh, images from the project, but it's a project itself. And uh, this is, uh, those are the stages. Uh, every company has different workflows. So this is just a personal approach to the, to the workflow. And uh, I like always to introduce the rail clone within the, maybe what I call the stage two and three, where we can be more creative when everything is clear and we have some setup, we explore, material lighting geometry and we can uh, talk with the client what is necessary and what are the needs of the project and uh, in this sense this is the phase where the 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 uh where Rayclon can help us a lot to develop the the scenes so we we are now in the scene we we arrive to why we chose this project for developing the scene into the this uh uh, Rayclone 6, why, why, what can we show from this project? The main reason why we chose this project is the facade composition. Well, uh, Pedro Pitarch, I think uh, they are, um, they have a really specific way of designing. I think they, they are a brilliant mind. And uh, they are always, or well, maybe not always, but they, I think that they like to, to, to think the architecture as a collage of a lot of concepts. They have a massive amount of information always uh, as an input for their designs. And that's why this facade I think is so interesting because it has a massive amount of information. It, it, it brings a lot of, it's organized uh, inside, let's say a chaos, but this chaos has an order. And uh, that's what I think is really interesting as it's a really interesting challenge in Rayplon because it's not just about randomizing, it's about finding the pattern in this chaos in order to express the correct, uh, uh, in a correct way, the, the architecture. Also, we liked a lot this, this scene because we have uh, some, uh, a lot of uh, multiple element, elements is uh, so versatile. So we, we play around and uh, find uh, some, uh, uh, some scenes in the interior, exterior. So we, we played a lot with the new features of Rayclon. That's why I also enjoyed uh, a lot. And finally, of course, everybody, we are looking for interesting uh, look and feels and artist impressions, right? So uh, I remember what that uh, Paul and uh, Jaime, we were discussing a lot about what to show in this in this project. 
And uh, what can we do uh, with with a more artistic approach, not that descriptive about the, the architecture? So that's why we chose also this this image because it's, it was a different mood. We wanted to show the project in, in several ways. But um, that's why also I think um, it was really interesting our collaboration with uh, when we worked in this project with uh, Pedro Pitarch because I also want to explain why was important for me and uh, why I think it's uh, more understandable. Un understandable. Uh, well, I think it's just something interesting about the process because in this way, uh, Pedro Pitarch and, uh, and I, we, were, we worked really um, uh, in a tight uh, collaboration. We were really in touch to, to develop this project because this was an idea. This was just a concept idea uh, project. And um, sometimes when we have this kind of projects, we get the model, we try to explore this model and we try to, uh, to find the nice moments in this project. But, but when it is conceptual, sometimes it's difficult because you don't have all the information. In this way, uh, we worked defining the, the image like we were designing the project itself. So we worked in, uh, in the image uh, in order to express what we wanted to, to, to what, what they wanted to, to explain in the competition. And uh, this is why in here we needed a, a view that was describing better the, the architecture. That's why we face in front the facade with all the nice elements we needed uh, the, the main landmark. We needed the, the, the character of the image in the center. And uh, we didn't want, uh, we wanted an aerial uh, view kind of with a kind of explanation for, for why we were here, but not seeing the in the foreground like people, vegetation and all of that. So we started to compose uh, this image with this landmark and then we dressed up the, the, the image with the rest of the surroundings. That's the logic of the, the this image and the project. That's why I think this is also an extra for defining the rate long uh, graphs because it can uh, help us in uh, in addressing really efficiently all of these elements. All of this is now built in rate long. We will see it. So uh, let's jump about. Uh, let's jump into the the scene. Let's talk a little bit about uh, rate long. If it's uh, okay for you, I will. Uh, have here the scene. I don't know, uh, guys, if you have uh, any questions so far. You say, yeah, uh, let's see if we've got any questions, Jaime. Is there anything that's in the chat that, that's um, worth it's mentioning clear. at this point? It's clear. All clear? It's clear, so let's go. Well, okay, a few let's... things that I found interesting about that explanation, though, particularly with you used um, rail clone as part of the development of the building itself. So it wasn't like the, yes. the architect had an entirely uh, clear idea of exactly what they wanted when they came to you and just said, make this into a pretty picture, right? You were a part of the kind of process of design, or your your work was. Is that fair to say? Well, in in this sense, um, I must say that everything was defined by by Pedro architect Pedro Pitar architects. They they uh, defined everything, and uh, it was everything completely clear. But uh, the, uh, that's why at the beginning this project was not uh, in a rate long, but it was a really interesting case to study in the rate long because. After having all of this powerful idea, we needed to, uh, in a way, do it logical for the graph, right? So yeah, we yeah. needed to extract all the concepts. We needed to control of this chaos in the in the design that was really into an order, and uh, that's why because sometimes we are used to randomize everything, a lot of elements. But uh, it's difficult to control some specific um, yeah, yeah. point on the design. So, it so actually, that, why, yeah. yeah. So actually, it was an interesting challenge for Rail Clone because you designed it outside of that, and then it was a case of, well, okay, does this, uh, does this project, which was designed non almost non parametrically with a lot of chaos things, can we fit that into a system like Rail Clone? And that's you found it. and you found that you could. Okay, I understand. That's it. Well, uh, uh, Pedro Pitarch also helped us a lot to to explain everything, right? Because when you have a complex uh, concept, you always like to to you need to understand everything. But once it's, it's everything in, it's, yeah, yeah, then it was logical. Right. So then uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, talk a little bit. Sure. What uh, the scene? Well, I was uh, explaining uh, about. Uh, 
the dressing up of the process of the project of the image. In here, you can see the image, right? So we have a main part, which is uh, super important, which is the, the facade. But also we have all the surroundings. I would like to be focused, first of all, in the simple codes and really efficient codes that uh, we, could, we could use with the Rayclone, with the new library. This uh, was, we can see here how elements are filling the scene is not so complex, but in the end, it's really important to have all of these elements uh, um, really fast uh, to 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 get a composition and to can to to be able to play around with it. That's why I think it's super powerful to have uh, a a, in, um, a big library and. Uh, and uh, a good library inside uh, Rail Clown because all of these graphs, you, you could see now that we can play with Rail Clown and it could be complex, but uh, also it could be really simple. In here, for example, we have several main elements. We have a triangle here for the composition, and we have the garden with the new uh, uh, masonry uh, elements. We have uh, some uh, street lights. Also, it was super important, I think, to introduce the the possibility uh, the possibility of introducing lights into into the the, the graph because in here you can see that uh, it, this uh, street light is a compose uh, is a composition between the lights and the the geometry and you don't need to to illuminate every element and you can change uh, everything that you want the distance and uh, and everything mainly in the in the scene you can uh, also combined with the uh, other elements, this, uh, this role. But I, I think um, you both covered pretty well all the new elements that we have in the, in the new library. But well, it's just a sample of how we can use these kind of elements and how following a design, we can, uh, we can implement all of these elements in a, in a lot of different ways. And uh, well, yeah. Again, we can really fast. I will. I will show. Just. I will move this a bit, and uh, of course, if we have a, a graph for those that you are not used to work with real plan. You see that we can drop a graph. We choose style. Maybe we go to the traffic, and uh, for example, this is the model we used for the parking. So we can uh, load it, and once uh, we have it, we just need spline and we have it. It's uh, pretty fast. It's, uh, it's, it helps me a lot to, to compose uh, and scene in this way. Also, because even if you don't have the main element, maybe you can later edit it. So I think it's... Uh, is really useful and it's speed up a lot the process. This is, for example, not in the library. This is something that we developed uh, in uh, um, into the scene. But again, is uh, is uh, really useful to have because we can compose all the different elements. This is something that we covered in the previous uh, webinar, right? That we were talking the, in the first release. So, uh, if it's okay for you, I think maybe we can jump into the main element. And explain the 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 challenges that we found in the solving of the of By the, the way, Rafa, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. By the way, yeah, of course. But, uh, there's as mentioned previously, there's new libraries coming coming soon. Yeah. So we're working in the in the new installment and should be ready in a few weeks. So again, the idea is to revamp the whole the whole libraries, including the plugin, um, in in a period of of twelve months maximum. So so that's what we, what we're aiming to. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I would add to that that in case you missed the previous announcements that we have an asset department now, so they're yeah. devoted full time to improving and then adding to the assets that come with Railplane. So um, if you find this so, stuff useful, there'll be more of it. Yep. The first idea was a total revamp. Uh, and now we're thinking about a total revamp plus adding new elements, because obviously there's a lot of stuff that was, was designed years ago and and they are outdated right now so i mean th that's what we did for example with the traffic elements we incorporated new stuff you know more actual so so that's the goal yeah i right. think it will be a really important yeah uh, because it's uh, i think for for me those uh, this is the first uh, 
main uh, topic with the radical right to be efficient with all of these kind of elements. And uh, the second is, of course, the versatility that it brings into the, the, the graph editor and, and everything. So that's great. Super nice news. OK, so let's isolate the elements that we want to explore a little bit. AI. Here we go. Yeah. So maybe we can understand a little bit better what is the relation. As you see, it's, a, it's not a, um, a complex start uh, starting point. We have one main element, which is a variation of a single apartment. So we have several languages for the same uh, element for the facade. So uh, we have uh, maybe hidden, uh, we have other kind of uh, elements as a, as a blind. And then we have another element uh, that we need to compose on the facade, which is the duplex, which is double height for the apartments. Finally, we have the third element, which is the details that we can see here and there, here and there, popping out of the design, in the, des at the design. So the main challenge was to, to, to combine all of it and to understand how it can be scattered into the, the, the facade. So, well, for, before jumping to the, to the graph, uh, I would like to introduce also why for me it's important to be organized. Always, um, I think we are afraid when we have this kind of uh, geometries. What will we find inside, right, of the of the graph? And uh, sometimes we find these kind of situations. Uh, this not sorry. I will show first this one. Yeah, you see that is exactly the same. Let's see. It could be a little bit scary when we open it and uh, is a uh, whoa. And uh, even for me, when, because when we, uh, uh, I like the expression that uh, always uh, uh, Paul says that it's like in a spaghetti, right? A wire uh, here, uh, a <laughs> yeah. menu, right? Bowl of so, noodles. <laughs> yeah, all of noodles, <laughs> exactly. So in here, you can see that, well, you can define, you can start seeing this is the, those are the segments and we have here some elements and maybe we have here some logic, maybe we have there some. So first of all, I think the new features that Ray, uh, the Ray clone allow us to, to, to do with the link or, or the different ways to, to organize the, these kind of uh, uh, spaghetti or noodles is uh, really powerful because we can drop in these complex, wi complex wires, these kind of elements. We can also rewiring, you see, and then we have the possibility of hidden these kind of connections. Uh, let's see. They're not on the same wire, yeah. that's, that's why. Here we go, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's why it's important to have an order. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you, Paul. That's fine. Here we go. So that's the first step that we can start thinking about in order to clarify what we are doing. Uh, so this is really powerful for me. Uh, there's also other features that we can use, but Mm, within my workflow is not just this. I think for me, it's important to know what Rafa from the past did and uh, to organize all of it in a, in a really organized way. And we names, I'm using this simple, this simple element of, uh, of the nodes because in this way, I will open a second code is exactly the same, but you will see a uh, main, uh, well, you will notice the, the difference. I will open again the code. And uh, within this code, I will do one thing. You see that this is completely different, but it also will do one thing, which is control W. And then we have here 
a completely different situation because we can see just at once, okay, we have here the apartment generators, we have here the duplex generations, the composition, and then we have maybe some composition rules. Now we can start explaining the stuff because we can see better the order of what we are doing. That's why I always recommend to be organizing the, the code. It, it doesn't require, it doesn't need to be like this. This is just a personal approach of how we can uh, organize the code. But that allows me, if I open the code one month later, how can, uh, well, maybe I want to change a uh, 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 segment here, or maybe I want to change the logic of the code. And this is uh, really useful for this. Uh, so, yeah, can I just, we... I'll just jump in there if that's okay. Yes, and course. I think that's, yeah. a, that's a really good advice because you're right. Like I've definitely come back to my own graphs in the past and, and had to spend so much time working out what, like you said, past Paul did <laughs> that, um, that I could have saved so much more time if I'd just taken that extra few seconds just to annotate it as I went. But um, perhaps even more than that, if you reach out to us and ask us for support, it can often take us quite a long time to work out how your graphs were built. Um, like I had one the other day that was absolutely huge. Like I couldn't zoom out far enough to see it all. Um, and there was no annotation and no naming in it at all. So you can imagine, like I know my way around rail clone, no doubt, but this took me a long time to work out. <laughs> uh, and so if you, yeah, please, please annotate things, uh, not just for yourself, but for us, if you ask support, but, but for yourself mainly, obviously, because, you know, hopefully you won't need us too much. But um, it's a really, really helpful tip, I would say. For, for and, and then when you repurpose it or you share it with someone, it helps everyone. So, yeah, really good advice. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. I, I think also I can imagine because you, uh, I know that you have uh, such a great response in all the the users, and uh, I know that you really look into everything when when well we we experimented when we were together in this code right Paul, so it's true that sometimes we needed extra explanation, and uh, inside also the the pro a professional uh, workflow. Within inside the company, it is important to make understandable this code for all all your colleagues. So that's not just for other people, but I I always recommend it uh, also in the the course when I'm teaching. So yeah, definitely, definitely. You will see that now it will be way way more understandable when I will explain some of the parts of the code, of the of the style in this in this graph. So let's explain this uh, graph. Let's explain this this style. Uh, I will uh, first disconnect. I will try to, to explain in parts what is happening. So let's switch off all of these elements. Do you see that now, as I know, I locate, I have allocated all of the information. It's super easy for me to know what shall I switch off and what can it, what, what I want to explain. Okay, well, I will disconnect as this is a nested generator inside the style. I will disconnect just to explain. So we told that we have this first element of the apartments and we have this second element on the apartments that are the duplex. I will explain first the more, most, uh, the one that we worked out more this one, you see that here it looks simple because it's uh, one graph, one uh, logic in uh, X in what direction. We have two elements, right? We, we have a sequence, apartment, vertical, apartment, vertical. And then we have second uh, the second row, which is horizontal. And this little guy that is really important for the, for the expression, for the style, because it brings us uh, stability in the, all the, the order, right? And we, we need it. We need sometimes these kind of uh, elements for support of our modeling. So I will show a moment. We have here the first apartment composition. And you see that it looks uh, complex, but it's not. It's just a composition of simple elements. We have uh, some models, we have the interiors, we have some plants. This is all the logic for the randomization that we want to put inside the apartment. So we need to take care 
of the pivots and all of this uh, kind of stuff to make it uh, respond in the same place on the on the model. And then we have uh, the composition. I'll, I'll just jump in there, sorry, because yes. so, so, we talked about this earlier. Right? I, I love this trick of randomizing, like getting something and having little groups of randomized objects. And you've got, I don't know how many objects, maybe 20 or 30 objects oh, yeah. you're randomizing there in groups. Um, but and that sounds like a lot, but but uh, I think I worked it out earlier. What what you end up with is something like nearly ten thousand possible different variations by putting in this little bit of effort. So you're, you're almost never going to see repetition with that number of of randomized sort of sort of objects. It's a really handy technique for creating these kinds of um, these kinds of you know really natural looking. Um, randomized facades it's really it's really good it's called combinatorics if anyone wants to look it up yeah Sorry, yeah yeah, yeah. In, in, <laughs> indeed, indeed no 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 thank you very much indeed because is this is uh, uh as i said super simple we have you can see it we have some blinds some uh silly lamps some floor lamps and then you combine everything you, you, you just need to see where is the, the pivot right and then uh well i like uh well as I told you, I like the order, so I like to write here what is inside of the composition, so I don't need to take a look of, of the the rest of the of the graph here on the side, and uh, I can know what is happening always here when I want to create the composition rules. So in this way, well, let's uh, start today. We, this is a simple sequence, so we can have. The, the sequence of this uh, Y uh, logic, like uh, I was saying, I was saying like uh, apartment uh, vertical and then the horizontal. So we have in one level the randomization and the verticals and the apartment, and we have the horizontals in other. You see that here we have the apartments. So the first one is the apartments, the row of the apartments, and we have here. The second one with the horizontals. I like always to compose everything by order. So we have here the vertical elements, the horizontal elements, and we just need to connect whatever we want in our sequences. So I will I will do this little part here. So you will see what was the problem. Uh, first, we have the apartment, right? I told that we have the apartment and we have the vertical element. I will uh, I will do the popping out. I call popping out the one that is popping out. The vertical element non popping out is the other. Okay, so it's pretty simple. I will connect in the sequence in the X direction. Perfect, so we have one here. Here we go. And we have a second one with the horizontal so we need the horizontal let's put the popping out and then the stick which is the one that is covering also the vertical element in this sense you can start to see the problem in this graph in this style we need these kind of elements i will connect again We'll connect again the old. We need this kind of element. You see that sometimes we have gaps, sometimes we don't have gaps, and sometimes we have this kind of uh, feeling of a maze, of a labyrinth, right? So, in this sense, we need somehow randomization of these elements. Okay, so let's start. We have in the vertical elements. Let's introduce randomization. And we want to randomize between the popping out and the non-popping out, right? So I will connect both. You see what's happening. Now in the vertical elements, we have sometimes ones that are popping out, sometimes ones that are not popping out. I, You will see better. I will make this double. I also did this parametric so we can see a little bit more of what I'm saying. You see, right, we, we is behaving properly on the horizontal in these vertical elements. Let's do the same with the 
horizontals that we have here. So in this element on the horizontals, let's do the same. Popping out, non-popping out. Do you see what's happening here? That's a really common problem for me. It's really difficult to control what is happening in the randomization because I don't want this to be alone. I need always to have a sequence where when we have a popping out element and we have a non-popping out right after I need a popping out. We were, I don't know if you remember, Paul, but we were developing a, a lot of amount of uh, of, of uh, graphs of styles yeah i think i i think i sent you one that was inordinately complicated and then you solved it in a way that was you know about much much simpler basically <laughs> well it we i think we, we it was amazing also we we both work here and it was really interesting but it sounds stupid right because it's just okay uh, i need here another element but but uh, I don't know how, no? And uh, always the simple, the better. Yeah, so, and the, the limitation, the reason why we found this complex is because that, that, that um, in or, for, for various reasons, but mostly to do with keeping rail clones efficient and fast as possible, it, exactly. each segment isn't really aware of its neighbours on either side, yeah. before, after, above or below. Um, so you can't kind of do what you'd imagine you could do, which is say, oh, if the segment to the left is this, then do this because it doesn't know, it doesn't know at that point. So we had to find various workarounds, which I think you're now going to explain. Yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah, we, we came up with a, with a really simple solution, which was, okay, let's keep it simple. If we have this random element and this random element, if we do a composition, just an extra step, a sequence with the second element, and always you have this non-popping out element, you have another popping out, then you will have more of those popping out elements and you will have always this situation where it's never happening in a row twice, this non-popping out element. So here we have the non-repetitive solution. So instead of, of uh, placing directly the non-popping out, what we did, is to randomize between popping out, use it here, and then a sequence between the popping out and the non-popping out. I don't know if it's uh, clear. Uh, I don't know if, uh, well, then maybe we can explain a little bit more, but I think this happens a lot in architectural design. As it is, is a really simple way to keep it under control. So when we, add this extra step and we compose a sequence within the sequence in the randomization, we never find these kind of problems. And we clean for the Y and for the X direction, we clean this, uh, this language, uh, let's say, and then we no longer have these kind of problems we, because we are saying to the, to the software, you see that always you find one gap right after you will place a popping out and then you do whatever you want we say to red clone you can do whatever you want you have freedom here to have to put whatever you want but every time you put one that is non popping out we have the second same with the vertical that was one of the uh, uh, challenges in uh, in the graph in the style editor so we solve it this way and uh, we we put it in the composition rules and we have a clear idea of what you need, what we need. Okay, but simple, yeah. right? Rudy? I think it's a, it's a really good solution. I think there is a tutorial somewhere, if, I, if memory serves me, called non-repeating randomization with RailClone, which is like a simple play mat and just trying not to get the colors to repeat uh, on the squares on a play mat above and yeah. below. Um, and uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's basically based on the same principle that in sort of slot one, you can only have so many options. In slot two, you can only have so many options. So they can, they can never kind of repeat. I'll, I'll see if I can dig it out and post it in the chat for people that are interested to look into that a little bit further. Great. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I think uh, this, this could be uh, really nice. It's, 
it's nice always, you know, when, when uh, I'm teaching, I always say that it's, it's nice to uh, see how different people solve the same problem because you always have a different uh, different uh, solution. So in this way, yeah, of course, I think this this could be uh, applied in many different ways. So uh, yeah, 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 indeed. Uh, this, this, this challenge was solved uh, this way. And uh, well, the, the, the second challenge then, second challenge was to, to have a composition between these both elements that we explained in the second element, uh, in the second uh, generator, because we have here, you see that we explained uh, the segments, we explained the composition of the segments, we have in this row the rules for the composition, and then we have the generator. You see two rows, generators. One of them is for the apartments. This was the most complex. Complex. It has a, is a, well, no, not complex, but uh, we had here the solution. Second one is just a simple sequence. We I will show. I will I did uh, show you right how, how it was the duplex, but uh, we had our second challenge, which was position specific elements into the into the array into the generator. So we used uh, this uh, nice feature also of nested generators, and uh, we defined this model with uh, three rows by four. We decided to do that like this, but we can do uh, many other ways. And we, decide, we decided to do the same size for both of the elements. And now we needed a way to scatter this with an order in into the, the array. So we found two possible solutions. One of them is, again, the sequences, because we had one element, which will be composing the general uh, element on the, on the array. And then we have a second element that we want here and there. So we have the first sequence, which is in, in, the, in the X. And here you will see the thing. Let me show you because with just one screen, maybe it's a little bit difficult. But uh, here we have the sequence. We can choose how many times we want to appear this element. Let me stop this out save. Here we go. And then you will see that if I move this element, the code will be adapted. Automatically, let's see if we are using this one, perfect. And this is the vertical. OK, imagine that you, we want twice this element to appear in the sequence. We can double. And instead of one model of this duplex, we have two. We will see it now. Here we go, where are you appearing? I will use this one. Maybe I'm not using the right code. Attached to that sequence, it looks like it's got a green output node to me, like it's not attached to something. Exactly, thank you very much. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you very much, Paul. You're welcome. Here we go. <laughs> here we have it. So here, for example, in the Y, we can choose where this is appearing, because if we choose that we want our main sequence in two levels, you see that now is happening here. We want to appear every five models, for example, so in the X, we can have twice the model. We can also have different situations. You see that we have control here on where is it appearing in the in the code. 
but uh, we can also do it in a different way. Imagine that instead of a sequence of this element, we want to place in these specific uh, locations. So we can also use a conditional. We could use also a conditional, and that's, that's the trick because with these new features, we can also use instead of, or we can use and and or, and we can use the segment counter. So if I say that always is false, we want to use the main code, the main, uh, the main uh, geometry, the main graph here of the apartments, it will appear in the overall. And then this duplex will happen in the, in the one that we specify here in the counter. So if we want, one element to appear in the first row. We have it here, we can change the position, we can play with it. You here see the adaptation of the style. So that's also really useful for me because you can also chain these conditionals and you could include other, a composition for other conditionals. And you can, you can use exactly the same. You can use this in false, and again, this one in true. If we use the same encounter, we have I just, a I just element. want to jump in there because there's a really handy tip there, right? For it, Say you want to copy that true from the first conditional to the second. You don't have to go and find the original node. You can just hold down shift while you click on the first true input node and then drag it and you'll get a new wire. So that's yeah, hard. Sorry, sorry, Paul, can you, can you repeat? Yeah, it's it hard, that's hard for me to explain. So if you put your mouse pointer over the, the, the first conditional node yes, and hover over the true input, into true. Oh, no, no, sorry. The, in, the input, I've made this complicated. I should have just let you carry on. <laughs> um, the true input of the first conditional, the, the yes. conditional one. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, hold down shift and click on that. So yeah. you get a nut. So now you have a wire. So that saves you having to go and find the original node wherever else it is hidden ah, away in the graph. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a really handy, it's a new Rail Clone 6 thing, but such a small thing. I don't think we've mentioned it in many other places. But um, it, just with these big complex graphs, that's a really handy way of quickly reusing wires here and there without you having to kind of zoom out, find the node, hunt it down in the graph, and then sort of track back across and, and everything else. Um, so I just just saw you doing that and I yeah. thought I'd mention it just so that other, I know you yeah, know, yeah. but I thought other people might uh, benefit. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. It would be super useful. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of annoying sometimes when you need to travel around. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the style. Yeah, but then, uh, yeah, exactly. So then we can use exactly the same logic for the second component. And in here, we can, again, replace whatever we want in uh, in our fashion. So, well, that was the second challenge uh, here that uh, maybe uh, was uh, was uh, interesting to to solve. It's uh, again uh, uh, simple to ways of solving depending on if we want uh, sequence placing sequence into the element or maybe just one by one but we have the important thing is that we have control here in the style editor so we can know when is appearing in my design or in this case in, in, in this case in Peter Pitarcha architect's design where this is appearing and uh, we just miss one challenge which is the popping out uh, this well this details that we have here and there as we have enough here i think in the style editor we decided to separate in a into a different uh, graph uh, in a, into a different generator so what we basically did is to compose with a clipping area you see here that we have a clipping area 
here, here, with different elements. So again, we repeat, we create a composition for these elements, really simple, whatever we need. And we create a selector by material ID. In this sense, we can see here that we no longer need the graph because with this scheme, with this placement, we have the material ID in each of the elements, each of the lines. You see that this is uh, depending on what I need here to appear. I have one material ID or other. So you can scatter what you need. And then you can also have different positions because as this, this uh, design was uh, in a, in, into an array, it's simple to play around and say, okay, now I want this detail here, or maybe I want this other detail here. And then it will be, I will go back here to the building. It will be automatically updated. So why we did this this way? Let's go back. Or maybe we show everything. Why we did this? Because I think, in my opinion, this is just a personal opinion, but when you have something under control, sometimes it's nice to have a second, um, a second input, simple second generator. And uh, yeah, yeah, here, here we go. Here we have it. I will isolate again this element. We have under control one thing. So I like always to think within my workflow inside Railplan to have separated elements uh, because sometimes it's, uh, in here it's so easy to play with this building. Now you have, uh, you can play with the height, you can play with the, the, the length of the, the building and uh, just with a couple of parameters, you can play around and it's really simple to change the, the design with, with those elements. And uh, otherwise, if we keep uh, working and working and working on the, on the graph from the style editor, sometimes it's a little bit heavy to, to move and to play around. And uh, well, in the end, that's uh, how we solve it. First of all, we solve it with the, with the sequences, the, uh, these kind of elements. Then we play with the nested generators to control inside this chaos that we said at the beginning these duplex and these simple apartments respecting the whole design. And then finally, we found a way with a second level of, uh, of generators uh, with this simple placeholder, how to place these kind of elements that are really different from the logic that we were talking about inside the original uh, design. It's, uh, it's sometimes difficult to, to, to merge difficult languages, mainly when you want a specific model and a specific size inside your, of your design. And then suddenly you come up with other, other thing. And uh, is uh, as we don't want to rethink everything because something is difficult, uh, something is nice. It's nice just to have this kind of helpers. Uh, yeah, I think uh, if, there's no questions. There's not a... There's a few things to mention, I think, that might be worth yeah. uh, answering. Um, the last one on there was questioned by Pneumatic, who just had a thought. Could markers have been used to divide or grid functions to place markers evenly along the spline or for similar things to avoid using edit spline modifiers? Or perhaps, he hasn't mentioned it, but perhaps the sequences to choose where to place the duplexes, for example. Did we... I can't remember now. Did we investigate the use, the possible use of markers for placing objects within the larger or controlling yeah. the chaos. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we use it. 
Um, the the only I don't know if you remember, but the only problem that we found is is the the second dimension in the, right. in the place right there. So in this sense, indeed, it's possible to do it with markers. But the first thing is that we needed to respect the array in this specific design. Maybe for other designs, it perfectly works, and uh, I recommend to to try. But for this one. Uh, markers were not helping because sometimes uh, you needed an adaptive uh, uh, array and uh, we needed to respect, uh, first of all, the, the original array. So this was a little bit difficult for placing. And secondly, we had uh, the problem of the height, of the height. Maybe, for example, imagine that we have um, models that is respect that are respected in a, in a linear array. This is perfectly doable. Yeah. Because then we can control linearly what what it will appear with markers, but in this in this one we wanted a a, a little bit of a, a bigger challenge, let's say, to place the objects and to have a little bit of more uh, custom made uh, design, yeah. a little bit more flexibility afterwards. That's why I think we 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 did it this way. But it's a good question. Yeah, it is an interesting question. I'm just thinking now where you could use a marker on the x-axis and then use a number in the marker to determine where yeah. the duplex starts and stops or something like that. But then that almost becomes more complicated than <laughs> the simple conditional nodes that you just demonstrated. Um, but uh, rail claims are flexible beasts, so there's generally like a, 10 ways you can do something, isn't there? So. Uh, it's an yeah. interesting question. A couple of other questions. This is a general rail clone question, but I'm going to read these out just because when people rewatch this, they don't necessarily see the chat. Um, this is someone who hadn't used rail clone much before, and they're asking how its parametric modeling approach compares to something like Grasshopper. Now, I don't know if you've used Grasshopper, but I'm happy to take that one if not. Yeah, yeah you can use Yeah. So, I mean, it, on the surface, they're similar because they're both node-based, but I would say Grasshopper is much more low level so and, and much harder to get into because with, with Grasshopper, what you can do is generate geometry basically from nothing, just using math. So you could start to build out geometry directly in the node graph, um, which is good because it creates an incredibly flexible parametric model where you can do pretty much everything and every part of the model can respond parametrically but it makes it quite advanced uh, to use. Uh, so rail clone, we tried to find a happy medium when we developed it originally. And what we've tried to do with rail clone is to start with pre-built pieces of geometry. So you'll notice in rail clone, uh, nothing is kind of created inside the graph. Everything is imported, whether that's the, the, the geometry or the splines or something else. So it's this kind of mix, happy mix of using 3ds Max for modeling and then distributing and controlling that distribution with rail clone. So they are slight, slightly different, but people do to keep drawing parallels and, and there's certainly crossover. Um, but on the surface, I would say rail clone is easier to use, it's higher level and you can't generate geometry directly inside the graph. You have to import it and then distribute it somehow using the rules that we've just seen being created. Hopefully that answers that. Yeah, uh, Paul, can, I, can I just uh, add one little thing, uh, Paul? Yeah, please. Yeah, I, I also think that uh, this is, uh, I totally agree, I completely agree, but uh, um, you need to be aware also of the use of the, the kind of modeling because NURBS is a completely different language than mm. uh, polygons, that, uh, uh, polygon modeling. So uh, in this sense, uh, Rayclon is is really easy to use when, when you need also to place textures when you need also to 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 think about how in reality this is built or or how the polygons are built, and uh, in NURBS you are thinking in pure design. I think. I mean, mm. I use also professionally uh, NURBS and and, and uh, this kind of uh, modeling. I, I love it, but I think it has a, a different meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and what you couldn't do from Railclone, for example, is go direct to manufacture or something like that, whereas maybe Grasshopper, you, you know, you have that option. Well, it's direct, not direct, but, you know, <laughs> along the way. Yeah, no, no, no. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, good. Um, someone asked if the scene was available for people to play with, which, of, of course, uh, no, it isn't, I'm afraid, because it's, um, 
it's you know an architect's work it's it's Rafa's work we, and it's got lots of uh, copyrighted material in there the textures and, and assets and so forth so I'm afraid we're not able to share it but I think Jaime you had some news about um, scenes possibly that you wanted to mention or you mentioned yep, in the chat exactly so we we are going back to the good old days in which we gave away completed scenes so you guys can play with it so we're working on a specific Rayclan scene that that will be given away soon and our idea same as assets is to have some kind of nice frequency so you guys can experiment with 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 scenes provided by by itself so that's the plan great thank you Jaime. and uh, i think someone just expressed delight at the idea that you could hide your wires <laughs> um said that would make their life easier so that's good and uh lars would like the dragging of the nodes trick and suggested that we do a a, a list of sort of topics that or, or, or uh, features that um, you don't necessarily know about but will save you a ton of time which actually I quite like the idea of as a tutorial or a blog or something like that so thank you for that suggestion and I think By that's way, all Paul, the questions think, for now yeah I think grasshopper is a lot of cheaper a lot, a lot cheaper than Rayclone is it I mean well, sorry Rayclone is a lot cheaper than grasshopper right well, grasshopper is free I think yeah yeah <laughs> I said free yeah. oh sorry about that. rhino's that's, not but sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, that was a big mistake by my side. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, but not available for 3ds Max, so you know. Exactly. You've got to buy Rhino first. I was looking at Rhino. Yeah, my mistake. Sorry, guys. Apologies. No, 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 no problem at all. Um, were there any other questions there that I missed, Tommy? Nope. So let's go. Okay. Okey dokey. Okay. Well, um, then, uh, yeah, indeed. Well, it, j just to 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 go back to the to the topic of these small things, I think this once you you uh, know how how to manage the the, the, the software and I mean, these kind of things, little things that you pointed out, uh, uh, Paul, for example, about the, the, are super useful uh, for me. Uh, uh, those are sometimes the more valuable <laughs> because it saves a lot, a lot of time. So always somebody know something about it that maybe we are missing it's a it's a please share because I, i'm really happy always to receive the, this kind of feedback um so okay. i think you were going to talk about how, uh, what, what to do with that style afterwards and how you can reuse it yes. to fill in the rest of the scene yeah cool yes which is a really useful topic also i will switch on into the graph uh here the last uh, two guys here on uh here we go yes the, well i don't know if um any of you followed uh, the, this this job because this is uh, a project that uh, we did uh, several years ago but um the image originally didn't have all of this background, all of these buildings, that's something that we created because we thought it was interesting to create. Once you have uh, a graph, a style editor, right? Because in here, well, you see that, okay, you have this uh, logic, you have solved everything, but uh, what else? Could we reuse, could we do something with this? Well, again, logic, an order when you have this order and you have locally let's see here huh? you have the logic of the all of this graph you can see that this guy has a lot of power this guy of the apartment this generator why because you have a lot of rules and a lot of uh, a lot of architectural language inside so we could use just this one to develop the whole neighborhood the whole background and this is what we did in here i will show right away i will do a simple line maybe a rectangle and you will see that that is exactly the same as we explained i will change the line it is completely responsive you see that we can change the value well we will see this later with the with the because this is a variation for the maximum and minimum i will explain this now inside the style editor 
This is the style, this is the graph. And you see that we took just the first part. We have the almost 10,000 uh, possibilities. So this is the, 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 <laughs> the most variated uh, um, segments that we found on the graph. And uh, then we introduce just one small detail. This here, this here, the randomization of the height of the, 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 of the graph. If you see here on the original, we have, I didn't talk about this lower part. Well, it's because it is also pretty simple what we had here, but as you see, all the rules of the height of the height of the of the graph, you see the fixed size, the y of the graph, everything is here, and we control in the parameters within the parameters we control what we want, how the the the, the geometry wants we want it to, to behave. So. If we come back to just this part of the graph of this generator and we use the size with a variation with a thing that uh, Paul already explained in the one of the last uh, tutorials of uh, this release, we can do a randomization between splines. You will you see it here. This is a feature that we have also in this last release in the in the red plan. So we can coordinate within splines, the different, the minimum and the maximum could be a parameter. So we put a minimum and a maximum. I will put here a really low one so we can see it here within different splines. And we grab all of this code, we change this, for example, the minimum will be, the maximum will be, well, the minimum will be maybe five floors. And the maximum, we see the code already changing. The maximum will be maybe 10, let's say. So when we apply with this small variation, the R metric of the height of the spline to have variation between several splines, and we apply to a multi-spline, we have variations in the height. You see that? The R, the tall is different between, between them. And we can play with it. For example, if now I say that I want 20 floors as maximum, we will have a lot of difference, a wide range of different difference between one building and another. So that's something that we can also save in our library when this is useful for us because let's say that I will use this for background several times. I can uh, re -go, I, will, I can go again to this plane and I can go to my library. I have here my personal library, for example, and I can create a library I can name it. And now it's so simple. Let's stop this auto save. Now it's so simple. Oh, sorry for the auto save. Here we go. Let's get it. Now it's so simple to save in the library because I can just right click, import objects from scene. I can just not think about it. It's just importing. And I can save this for uh, other projects which for example, for an architectural office, imagine that uh, the, the, the design team wants to reuse this kind of language for other purposes in future projects. That's really useful because we don't no longer need to think about how can I build this or can I just drop it, just change this plane and it will work. Well, this is uh, taking a little bit of time but you will see now how everything is created. It's just that the, this scene is a little bit, uh, maybe with a, a lot of elements in forest, maybe I should have uh, done this in a separate 
scene was just to save time. But you will see that, uh, well, you see that is uh, pretty simple. Yeah, it's just a big scene, isn't it? So it's hiding and showing, yeah. and, uh, and then it will, and it will yeah, sort of hide everything well, to create thumbnail. So it's uh, that's just why it's behaving a bit slowly. It's yeah, so in in the, I always what I recommend always is to separate to safe select it, this geometry. Mm. Then you have a clean scene, and you can uh, save in your library uh, your assets, and it will be created automatically. Mm. And you don't have uh, well, you, you see now. I don't there, know there if, it's generating the thumbs. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. So now we have this element. We have these guys, and uh, we can reuse this code, uh, this this uh, this geometry, this this graph as many times as we want. Let me refresh. I think the viewport is a little bit crazy now. I think it's understandable, right? Is it, is it, is it clear? Yeah, it's clear so. anyway. I, I, I just add there just uh, briefly while you're talking about that, that it, as well as obviously saving the object, the rail clone object, itself out into a max file it will also um, gather all the assets that you use so the textures and so forth together and save those to the library too so that when you import it again you can sort of be sure that the textures are in the right place and you haven't necessarily got to leave them where they originally were and scattered across your hard disk. not that i suggest yours would be scattered across your hard disk because i'm sure you're very organized but i'm not <laughs> um, so for, for me it's great that it pulls stuff all together and puts it in one place yeah, indeed. Indeed, indeed. No, well, uh, I mean, it, it was always useful, but I must say that it's really time saving this uh, uh, this this uh, new feature of the library. Mm. And um, well, I I have one more thing if you want uh, to discuss. I don't know if you prefer to chat a bit uh, about uh, a project, uh, professional uh, work. I'm open now to, or maybe, well, I have uh, this as a bonus, which was the, the, the fake ceiling. I don't know. You There's a, yeah, we'll definitely talk about that. I think I've got just a couple yeah. of questions, I think. That yeah, there's a few questions, in. guys. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, um, so one of them was about the building that's on the left there. They were asked, yeah. someone was asking, I think it was Amit, was asking if that's parametric. And he, he was questioning it particularly because it's got a spiral staircase. So I think he was curious to know if Rail Clone could do spiral staircases. I'm not sure. Um, so that was one of the questions there. Well, in this one is not a uh, parametric. In this sense, we uh, we were focused on the background, on the main element. It could be perfectly parametric because you see that is the same logic. I think uh, the the um, um, this could be, for example, a nested generator. Could be super easy implemented in a in a graph in a style editor, mm. because if, if we split, in this scene, we didn't need to parameterize uh, this because it was enough for, with uh, what we had. But I think, uh, I don't know if you agree, Paul, but we can separate uh, several levels here. We can do a model out of these uh, geometries. Yeah. And it will be really simple to do it vertically totally. and then nest it in the, in the generator, in a linear uh, generator. Actually, if you have a look on our forum, there was a, a chap who was uh, asking, uh, and I gave him quite a lot of help to help him to add libraries, uh, sorry, not libraries, uh, external fire escapes like you see in New York, you know, to the outside of parametric buildings, which is a similar kind of thing, right? So it'd be kind, this, kind of, this kind of setup. Um, and there's quite a long thread or a few threads on there, but, but also that, as it turns out, became a, a collection of Evermotion um, parametric buildings that used rail clone. Yeah. Um, so you can you can see that that was possible in those particular buildings but you can see the um, you can see the thread if you want to know how to do it on our forum um, uh, it might take me a little while to find it to post it now but if you go and have a hunt around or email us I'm, I'm sure I can find that for you the other question there was in the main building we talked about this earlier in the main building were the lights added using rail clone? or were they added separately? Actually, this, let's, yeah, that's a super interesting question because I don't know if you remember, but in uh, these kind of elements, 
we told that we had also lights included for for scattering so we and it's behaving properly you mm. can also change it and you can uh, change the power so when you use let's go back to the segment as you see we didn't go into detail in this uh, kind of elements but you see that it's super simple it's the the main thing is respecting the the um, uh, the pivot the, the always in all the geometry so it should be in the same place always so it would be simple to include light inside of this uh, graph inside of this uh, style editor because we just need to include one more element inside our composition i don't know if you remember but uh, we can include in our main project Imagine that we need a light, maybe a mirror light, right? We have it here. Maybe we can illuminate, illuminate this way. Maybe we can illuminate it any other way. And uh, we can uh, we can align our pivot to our original. Uh, geometries so that's something that is really important well for me at least it's uh, really important to have always under control these kind of elements otherwise it uh, it's, it's complicated it's um it's complicated to to, to think where the pivot should be mm -hmm. and, and uh, where where should i align everything I didn't explain it, but if you see in all my generators, I have this. An override transform node for the pivot. So I will be sure that everything is with this logic, within this logic of the of the pivot. And uh, I can I, I don't need to be afraid if I introduce any other element into the compose, in the into the composition of the apartment, because I can uh, be sure that here it will behave properly. Uh, in this way, uh, as I tell, uh, I, we can introduce a new segment. We can uh, introduce this new guy here. I will visualize. Here we go. Here we have it. And then that simple we have it i will go back to the original uh, view is updating style editor it's a lot of lights now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 that's why do you remember when i was uh, doing the code a little bit smaller to explain all of this i like this is something that i always re would recommend also to try things in small parts mm. and uh, every every time everything is already calculated then is is way uh, faster yeah that's so true actually a really handy uh, trick for that is just on the right hand side where you've got your base objects roll out there um mm. most people don't know, see this here but there's a little checkbox button that says full length there if you turn that off, yeah. you can actually just take as like a slice of the X spline and just exactly. test it on a shorter section first. A really quick way of testing on a just short section of spline before you fully commit to the, the whole yeah. shebang. Yeah, I use it a lot. This is really useful. If we say that we want not full length, but maybe uh, we have here the, the lights. I needed to change this before. But <clears throat> it might be a quick mesh thing too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> can be a bit unpredictable. Um, I think we. I think that's the idea. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so I think there were a couple more questions. Okay. Uh, oh, that's one for me. Does does the library browser also collect proxy files or just textures? Do you know? I don't. I've never. I don't use proxy files with Rail Clone ever myself. Um, so that's yeah. not something I've tested. I will get back to you on that one. I'm not sure. I'll test it first thing tomorrow, unless you've tried it. Um. Well, I, I must say that uh, we tried with one of the elements uh, proxies here, 
and it was problematic uh, because the 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 problem is um, in general you cannot slice you cannot bend uh, elements exactly. that are proxies. Yeah. So in, in this way, uh, it's difficult to manage proxies, and I don't. I, as we have instances always in all the graphs, in all the the, the style editor, um, I, I I I don't see so useful maybe to use. No, proxies. I don't use them. But the question was whether it's safe to the library. I'm sorry, I'm just saying. Lars Net asks if uh, has said that proxy files do work in Railclone. Absolutely, just want to make that clear. Proxy files will work in rail clone but uh, as you've just pointed out they don't they won't they can't be sliced and they can't be bent deformed you know mm. they're just static models so for things like the street lamps that would work fine um but if it was something you were trying to curve around a spline or you wanted to slice at the ends or something like that not not so much um so proxy files are absolutely supported whether they save into the library automatically or not the source files i'm not 100 percent sure i'll just have to double check that okay um, Rafa, there's a question from, from Charlie Ballesteros. Um, mm -hmm. I think maybe you have some news to, to give. It said, Rafa is a really good teacher. I hope he has a beginner level Rayclone course. So, do you have <laughs> anything to say about that? I'm sure you have. Well, uh, the Rayclone, uh, well, thank you I very much. First of all, thank you very much, uh, Shari. And uh, <laughs> I'm glad that, you, that uh, you're here. Well, in a uh, we will continue. I will continue with with uh, schooling, of course, teaching uh, uh, E2 software, um, Rayclone, and Forest Pack. I enjoy it a lot, as I said at the beginning. So uh, it will be more coming, of course. Great, lovely. Actually, yeah. actually, the ne I don't know when we will set the next one, but it will be a next for sure, for sure. We will we'll check with Eduardo and Adam and exactly. see what's the next one. Yeah. You guys can find information about schooling on our ATC sections. It's one of our ATCs here in Madrid. So, okay, yeah. what else, Paul? Uh, there's no more questions. You, you, we have about nine minutes left. I um, yeah. uh, didn't know if that was enough time for you to do your little bit on the ceiling you wanted to talk uh, about. Ah, yes, yes. If, if, uh, that, if you can fit that within nine minutes, we can talk about that and then we can <laughs> say goodbye. Okay. Let's let's try and maybe we can uh, do a little bit uh, flexible and we can. Uh, okay. Um, we have here in the extra details. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were thinking also how to use the the uh, Rayclone power not just for big. Uh, graphs for big uh, styles, but also for these small elements. That's why we were exploring also several possibilities. And we used um, this, uh, this graph also with, uh, with um, the, the tool that you also offer in E2 software of uh, the, the, the spline um, uh, offset, the, the script which is uh, super useful because I don't know if you remember the shape that we have on the landing of the building. I will show it to you. So we had uh, this shape, which was a little bit uh, uh, curvy here. And uh, we wanted to have this kind of language, right? So we could uh, mix with the furniture. We can we could mix with with this space, and uh, we wanted to have something interesting. So we end up with a simple element. Let's show this graph. You see, it's, it's incredibly simple, but in combination with the with with the offset script. In a it is software, you see that here maybe you can see better the logic. You see that you we have one generator as a spline, we have a second spline as a generator, and then we have just an offset. And there is an offset not in one dimension but also in vertical. So we have the lamp popping out. This was the logic of the design. And then we did with an expression, within an expression, this orientation and the amount of rotation that is 
parametric. So we can use also this graph model. You will see now, I will try to show here really fast. I will increase significantly the amount. So we have a graph that is analyzing where the spline starts and where the start the, the, the spline ends. And is rotating a little bit. You see one second, the third, the fifth. We is rotating a little bit every time we increment the spline, the explain position, the segment position of the element. That brings us control also to open or close the gap of the lamp. You will see that if I place in zero the rotation, you see that now is completely vertical. And then we can play a little bit with this static, with simple graphs, with this expression that is uh, basically saying that uh, we have and uh, explain, uh, well, may maybe that's a little bit difficult to, to explain. And this is uh, actually uh, uh, one that is already explained. Uh, maybe I can find later the example where we can find this uh, expression. Um, I, I was going to add there, actually, sorry, that uh, if that's what you were aiming to do, to have the angle at the beginning of the spline different from the end and it, and it sort of tracks across the spline, then an, another option, which will give you a slightly different result be because yours are, are stepped on, on each segment, which is quite nice. Yes. Yeah. Um, but if you wanted a smooth change in the scale so that it deforms um, evenly without the stepping, then you could use the rail clone spline modifier. Mm -hmm. instead and that's got uh banking settings as of relatively recently i think rail clone 5 we introduced them um and th that you can do with those is to kind of just add a, add a gizmo to the spline and then you can kind of change the angle of it one at the start and one at the end and it will gradually deform down the length yeah. of the spline which is quite handy it would be a lot more work you'd have to do it to all the splines <laughs> but um yeah <laughs> just I'd, me I'd mention it there because it sort of fits into this option and it's what it's another one of those little features that i'm not sure everyone is aware that it's there but it's quite powerful yeah indeed indeed that's uh, yeah yeah that's uh, super interesting also yeah, yeah indeed indeed i uh i didn't try is in in this in this uh, graph i don't know if it will be that complex to do one by one, I will try. I will try. I didn't. I didn't try in here. So uh, yeah, well, um, yeah. I think we have uh, not so much time. That, that's why maybe we cannot go into detail in this. But I just wanted to show that sometimes with a really simple expression, expression, uh, you can uh, you can do uh, you can have uh, complex results. That was the main the main point in 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 on it. Maybe maybe uh, as I said, maybe we can place on the comments uh, where I I I think it, this this was explained in a different tutorial by you. But uh, anyway, uh, maybe we can find it. We can place it. But it's a it's a really simple expression. It's just uh, uh, conditional with the with the with the exposition, and uh, then we is changed among the. Mm. If yeah. there's interest, um, let us know, because we can always do a little breakout tutorial just on, on this one particular style and just dig a little bit into how that expression works, using just that yeah. as a basis for talking about expressions. It might actually be quite interesting. It will tie in with the scene that we're already using. So um, that, yeah. that, could, that could be worth doing. Yeah, yeah. Also, because when I don't have time, I always uh, do this uh, stuff of trying to explain everything in, in, with nothing, and it will be non-clarifying at all. I think uh, it would be better to explain it uh, properly and uh, a little bit calmed. Cool. Okay, but uh, then uh, do we have any other question? Any other? Um, let's have a look. I think there's. We had a question at the beginning about the pebbles, the pebbles on the feature image, the feature saying there's there's pebbles on the on the right hand corner. Yeah, that's fourth pack. Okay. Yeah, that, that that's a um, uh, force pack, and uh, is uh, I always like. Well, it can be also a texture. It can be also a material. That depends on the on the person on the, on the professional. But always we have uh, 
some element on the foreground. I always like to treat it as a, as a geometry. Forest Park is a really nice tool to develop this kind of aesthetics where we have a lot of complexity with a lot of uh, bumps and uh, rocks. So this is uh, just uh, some rocks that are scattered by Forest Park. Excellent. Lovely. There was a cool. question about support for Corona and V-Ray decals, decals. I don't know why I said that, decals. Dec um, yeah. And um, I'll take this one. But like last time I checked, uh, v uh, Corona decals um, work fine with Rail Clone and Forest Pack. So that's cool. Um, V-Ray ones, um, I think, have some limitations still, possibly don't work. As someone has mentioned in the chat, the solution, therefore, is to instantiate them using Rail Clone tools or Forest tools. And then that's fine. You can still use it to distribute. Um, it's uh, it's not, as far as we understand, a limitation of Rail Clone. It's just something to do with the way V-Ray works. And if you're ever sure if something's our problem or or it's just a limitation of the engine, with V-Ray, one thing to do is to check it with V-Ray Instancer. And generally speaking, if it works with V-Ray Instancer and not our plugins, then it's something we can fix. If it doesn't work in V-Ray Instancer, it's likely to be something that uh, Chaos will have to fix. But that still, still let us know because we talk to each other all the time. Um, I think that was the only other question in there. I I wanted to be, almost forgot. I wanted to bring uh, one uh, more topic, uh, uh, Paul, that we discussed about the conditional. Do you remember with strings? Yes. Yeah, that that would be interesting because I uh, just to mention that uh, in here now we have in this graph we explained mm -hmm. that we can. Uh, place elements, uh, randomization of uh, elements, or, or place specific elements whenever we want. With these two methods that we explained, I'm sure that there's plenty of other methods that we can use. But uh, with, with the new features in, uh, in the parameters, in, uh, here we go, with string mode, with this new feature, it could be interesting because we can avoid several conditionals in a, in, a, um, in a chain. So it would be great in the future if we can uh, have this uh, connected to the, to the segment uh, counter. And it would be great uh, to, to introduce that. I think, I think you, would you're just a, getting this feature request live on air, aren't you? So that we have to, uh, <laughs> we have to commit to it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. That would be handy. But just to mention at the moment, so you may have missed that too, but, um, what you can do now with this strings thing, it was actually added to, it, um, for sort of quite complex pipelines that use, um, user generated tags and things like that but we also allowed it to export um, comma separated lists and ranges um, but currently in rail clone that only works with the generators limit to id features so that's cool because that's going to save people copying loads and loads of generators around to get these kinds of effects so you can do it now do it just with one and a, and a string and a comma separated list but that's currently and i say currently the only place those work in the graph Okay, just, just to make that clear. Um, but it, none, even that's quite a time saver. I know there are a lot of styles where you, you end up having to duplicate the same graph again and again and again just to hit different possible um, conditional material IDs. And, uh, and that takes away that, that kind of problem. So you can use uh, those instead. You can also export those strings to the um, parameters rollout. So you can write your comma separated lists directly in the parameters rollout too. So it is a big time saver. But, as Rafa pointed out, it doesn't work in conditional nodes, which would be handy. Well, yeah, well, I didn't want to bring more work for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, it's how no, we no. get better, right? <laughs> User feedback. Yeah, but uh, I, know, I know that this is uh, really complex, and uh, I think it's also a possible solution now, as, as you mentioned, Paul, with the, with the uh, material IDs. I think it will be super powerful. Uh, maybe in the future with some combinations, we will even have some more exciting uh, tools. But uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I'm, uh, I'm always excited about <laughs> these kind of things. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, I think we're I think we're out of time. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Um, I don't see if any more questions come in since then. Not at all. Not at all. No. I think it was quite interesting. And for the first time, having third artist over, I think it was quite enriching. So, I mean, we will do this again. I think I think people appreciate, for the comments, people appreciate the fact of having someone 
um, working with our tools from production. Okay, and, and, and not always from our dev point of view. I mean, we we always think about uh, developing the best features, but but once the product gets in the hands of 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 artists, is when you really see how the how they work. So I think this was great, and and thanks a lot, Rafa, for 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 sharing this with us. Yeah, thank you so well, much for your yeah. effort. Well, and, uh, thank you very much. Excellent. Yes. Sorry, thank so, you very much for all the, to all of you also to 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 have the opportunity to have it here, and thank you very much for all the audience also to to follow us. Excellent. So nothing else. Thanks a lot, and um, cheers. See you next time. Rafa, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Ciao.